morning, everyone. Those who are physically with us this morning, those who are watching online, we welcome you to our services. We wish you a happy new year and a blessed new year uh, for 2022. Uh, and again, we're just so very thankful that you've uh, decided to start your new year off in the house of the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, truly you are the Lord, creative of our, of our galaxy, God of wonder. Father, we just come today, this morning, to honor you and to praise you. We come to this morning, Father, to uh, listen to your word. We come this morning, Father, to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We come this morning, Father, to gather around your table to remember our Lord and Savior Jesus and his sacrifice for us. We come this morning, Father, to give our gifts to you who has given us every good and perfect gift. Father, we're just so thankful. So thankful, Father, that you bless us in so many, many ways. Father, be with our service today. Be with those who are speaking. And again, Father, may we just honor you, and glorify you, and praise your holy name in every word that is spoken, every song that is sung. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we're going to call upon uh, Judy Longley, who will come up and give us our mission moment. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to the congregation of Corner House and for all the support that you have provided for the missions this year so that we never missed our commitment to our missions. Plus, we were able to send $500 towards uh, building of a school for the Living Proof program in Africa. And uh, we've also uh, been able to do many other things that have come up. So we just give you a thanks for that. And we praise God that he helps us to use uh, what we have to further his kingdom. Uh, we, didn't, we haven't met yet this mission, so I can't really give you much of a report except to say that David came to me and asked me if we would take up a collection next Sunday towards those who ha, uh, were uh, lost everything in the tornadoes that hit, especially down in Kentucky and, and the different areas that were really badly hurt. And we will send that to Ides and put it with their money and the money that comes into them so that they can do uh, a big job of reaching out to those people and helping them. As I told you, the last month, some of the work that I did resulted in two new churches being started because they were there when people needed them the most. And most, some of them found the Lord through that. So may we continue to support IDES and the work they're doing. So any, there will be a special collection next week for anybody who wishes to give, and we will add to it through the missions and send it on to IDES. Thank you. Yes, if you want to make out a check, make it out to two eyes. We're doing things a little bit different this morning. Uh, we were supposed to have a guest speaker in, but uh, he became ill, and so he was unable to make it. So uh, uh, Dave uh, had an idea, so we're going to follow through with his idea. And so I'm just going to tell you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, and uh, we'll take it from there. When someone says, I wish you a happy new year, it doesn't mean they hope that every day for the next 365 days, you go about with a smile on your face, enjoying total 
and complete satisfaction and happiness in your new life. That would be nice, but also unrealistic. Happy New Year is not a statement of daily perfection, but of hopeful expectation. When someone wishes you a Happy New Year, they are wishing you well in the coming year. They mean they hope your new year brings you all the good things, like joy and peace and hope and prosperity. As we open our Bibles to Matthew 5, we come to the Sermon on the Mount. How does Jesus begin this sermon? He begins by wishing us spiritually well. In fact, Jesus said, oh, how blessed are the. And the word used there, the word blessed, is markarios, which means, oh, how happy. These are counterintuitive statements. Oh, how happy are those who mourn. Oh, how happy are those who hunger. People in the world think you are going to be happy if you pursue what you like. But Jesus tells us what makes us happy is when we are poor in spirit, when we are meek, when we are pure in heart. By our nature, we're not like this. What the Beatitudes ask of us is impossible by our human nature. We cannot do and be what Jesus calls us to be. So Jesus gives us an impossible beginning for an impossible sermon. He says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. The challenge of the Sermon on the Mount is that we are willing to climb it and learn from the master. Dare to climb the mount? Three chapters, about 2,000 words, 107 verses, and approximately 22 minutes of reading time. Dare to come into the presence of the perfect Son of God to discover his will for your life in 2022.
Amen, and blessed be his name. You know, over and over in the Gospel of Matthew, we uh, are reminded of this counterintuitive, upside down, almost, but not yet, kingdom of God that's breaking into the, men, into the world of men. And in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, Jesus tells us exactly what this kingdom is to look like. Now, when they, he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, sat down with his disciples, and began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted when... Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For the same way that they persecuted the prophets who were, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, and neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter in the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, Anyone who says to his brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, it will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them. Then, Come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the officer, and the officer will throw you into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. 
If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you, anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows of you have made. But I tell you, do not swear by an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is the, his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot even make one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond that comes from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to them also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect.
continuing in our reading of the Sermon on the Mount, starting with giving to the needy. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you comes to prayer and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing standing in the in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others truly I tell you they have received their reward in full but when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that, that will, they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then their sin, your Father will not forgive your sin. When it comes to fasting, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do or they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put on your face ahead and put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Treasures in heaven, do not shut up or store up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye are, are unhealthy, you ought to whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you in darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. That you will have the, hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God 
and money. Now do not worry. I therefore I tell you that not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or your body, what you will wear. It's not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap, store away in, in barns, or yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. continue reading in chapter 7. Do not judge, or you will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will also be judged. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention 
to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all at the same time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to the pigs. If you do, they will trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The word, the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law of the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Watch for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. People pick grapes. People do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit, and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruits, you will be recognized. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because its foundation is on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain came down and the streams rose and the wind blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings because he taught as one who had authority not as their teachers of the law. Without you. 
As we prepare our hearts for communion, we give thanks to the Lord because He is good. It's right that the centerpiece of our worship service is the communion service. This 2,000-year-old tradition, this ordinance from the Lord, who, uh, c commanding us to remember what He has done for us. You see, the Lord's Supper, the communion service, tells a story. It tells the story of the Lord's passion and gives us the promise of His grace. In Mark chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus tells us, Truly, I tell you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. With all that was swirling around Jesus, he led his disciples in the great Halal Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is the last and the most significant of the liturgy that is read and repeated at every Passover meal. The sequence is called the Egyptian Halal or praise. 
Psalms 113 through 114 are sung before the meal. Psalm 115 through 118 are sung after the meal. The sequence reminds the participants of their history and the blessings that flow from being part of the people of God. Psalm 118 tells us of the greatness of God and the truth that his promises will be fulfilled. You see, Jesus knew what waited him on the Mount of Olives and what was about to play out, yet he led his followers in a song of praise, in confidence that God would do what he had promised. We too, in this time of uncertainty, sickness, violence, worldwide political turmoil, like Jesus, we can rest assured in the promises of God that the Father of our Lord Jesus has given us. Jesus said that he is returning to restore all things and make them new once more. And this promise is implicit in the communion meal that we partake of weekly. The promise Jesus rested in as he faced his coming passion. The psalmist writes this, I will not die but live and will proclaim that the Lord, what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me, and you have become my salvation. You see that the stone that the builders rejected, it has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For from the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is good, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. As we share in these elements, the bread and the cup, Lord, we ask your blessing upon them. We remember the passion of our Lord Jesus, and we give thanks that he defeated death and gives us life. Your mercy is everlasting, so we pray, come, Lord Jesus, amen. Let's partake of the elements together, the bread and the cup. Father, as we begin this new year, we just pray that we will rest in your blessings, that we will remember your promises, Father. And Lord, most of all, we just thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Commander, the one who has given us life. Father, we pray the great prayer of all who believe in you and your promises, we pray, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
go through our week, let's remember those who were victims in the firestorm in Colorado. Even now, the fires are out, but now they're suffering in a big snowstorm. They have several feet covering the areas that were burned off. And also, continue to remember those who were part of the tornadoes that swept through the lower Ohio Valley the people in Tennessee, the people in Kentucky, those who were in southern Indiana, they faced something that was totally unprecedented this year. Also, the rest of those that are on our prayer list, JJ and Samantha and Baby, um, congratulations to Russ and his mother on the birth of their first granddaughter. Oh. That's for Kathy Nalepa. Congratulations to Kat. Remember for, to pray for her and her grandchild. Valahoy, who is going through testing. James Mullins, who has COVID and other health issues. Katie Wells. Dave Ballinger in his travels. Danny Ray. The Marshall family, who has COVID the Revis family with the passing of Jared, Jerry, the Laughlin family on the passing of Bob, Philip Ray, who is in the Cleveland Clinic, Mar Marnie Watkins, and the Jacobs family. So Father, we just simply come to you. We lift up all these names, these people, these situations, Lord. But Father, we know that your will, your guidance, everything comes from you. So we have no better place to leave these people in these situations except in your hands. Father, we pray a blessing upon all of them. And Lord, I pray a blessing for us as we leave this day to begin a new year, a new week, a new time. Lord, there's so much turmoil, confusion, and change in our world that we just don't know which way to turn except to you. So, Father, we ask your blessing. We ask that you would help us to always remember that we are your children. And it's in your son's name, the precious and loving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Would you please stand and sing that course with us again? Amen. Sure. 